Oh, hey, Annie. Hey, Lars. What's the matter? Aren't you having fun with your trains? Oh, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm wondering what, what order I should put my train cars in. Maybe Prolog could help. I bet so. Sequencing is a classic constraint problem. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it with constraint logic programming over finite domains. We'll do the normal stuff up front. We'll take a bag of cars, uh, an unordered um, multi-set of cars that, and return those uh, ordered in a, in a valid way. Uh, the engine's always on the left, so we don't need to check, so we don't need to include it. Um, now, what kind of cars do you have? RPO, a railway post office, uh, and a baggage car, and a sleeping car, and a chair car for short distance passengers. Uh, then we have uh, the diner for meals. Then we have the uh, lounge and the uh, lounge in a dome car to pass the time. And then we have an observation car. That's the car with a little porch at the end. Let's make certain we're past something sane. Uh, a grounded list of cars. Uh, Generally, it's a good programming strategy to reject lots of bad input lots of, right away. That way you don't have to further reason for, about it or check for it. Um, we're going to need the length of the train, uh, so let's grab that now. Uh, and um, now we need a list of what order uh, in the train the tra cars are in. So if the first car er, in cars is the diner, then the first element of order will be whatever number, um, whatever the diner's location is in the train. Hey wait, you haven't used order yet, and you have used len. You get a list of length len full of unbound variables. Is that what you really wanted? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, um, We'll start with unbound variables, and we'll start applying constraints to them. So if this car can't be before that car, then we constrain this element of order to be less than that element of order. Now, I've already added a couple of constraints. First, I made every order element of order be in 1 through len, um, and then... That makes sense. We uh, can't have a car in position 9 in the 6th Yeah, frame. and then... Um, I made certain there's one car in each position. There's a handy all different that will let you do that. So uh, we make certain there's only one first car, only one second car, and so on. Uh, they all have to be different. That's the pigeonhole principle. Any, won't we have lots of constraints? Yeah, we will. But that's okay. Uh, we don't have to solve the constraint system ourselves. CLPFD will do that for us. So the cars are going to have to are going to have some rules of their own about where they can be and those will add constraints to order. Let's do that in its own predicate. We want the diner to be near to everyone since it's hard to move along the train and uh, disrupt other passengers. Okay, so let's add a variable dist which is some measure of how hard it is to get to the diner and then later we'll minimize that. Oh, neat. We can do optimization as well. Yeah, we just passed dist as a variable to minimize when ordering solutions. Uh, labeling forces all the variables in its second argument to be ground. In this case, dist and all the car orders. What's the first argument? Uh, that's the options to the predicate labeling. We want to minimize dist, and we select fail fast as a strategy for finding labeling. I've found fail fast to be a good strategy when there are lots of options, like here. Now we have the order list ground, um, but that's not a good way to deliver the info to the user. We'll make car order pairs and then sort them by order and strip the cars back out using the handy pairs library in Sweet Prolog. And then with that out of the way, we're ready to start thinking about the actual rules. That varies with the kind of car. Uh, 
near the baggage car, passengers aren't allowed in the baggage car, so it has to be at one end of the train. Okay, so we'll keep two variables, min walk and max walk, and only let passengers move around between them. This other one is a railway post office. Years ago, much mail moved by train. It was sorted aboard the train itself in the RPO car. Passengers, of course, can't move through this car either. And uh, this is the observation car. It has this fun little porch on the back. But of course, you can't get from it from a car behind. So it has to be the last car. OK, so let's co code these restrictions. Remember, we still need to write constrained positions. Uh, we'll need the length min walk and ma the length min walk and max walk variables, the cars array, and order. We'll constrain min walk and max walk to be reasonable indices and make men, min be less than or equal to max. And then we can add the constraints for each car individually. So we'll use map list. Neat. So far we haven't had to do each car type individually. Yes, but now we do as we implement a car. The observation car is easy. It has to be in position len. We can also constrain max walk to len since the passengers have to be able to reach it. The baggage and RPO car are the same for our purposes. They have to be outside the walkable area. And all the other cars have to be inside the walkable area. Wow, it's like we define a problem and then we're done. Are we done? We used car type to get the types of cars and we need to make the diner distance constraint, but otherwise, yeah. Oh, yes. Here's the types of cars. Uh, hey, uh, Lars, what if there's no diner? Oh, if there's no diner, nobody walks to the diner, so the distance is zero. Oh, okay. So, so we um, need the diner's location, but that's not known yet. But if, if we find the diner in the cars list, uh, the corresponding element of the order list is the diner's location. Even though we don't know it yet, uh, we can use it to constrain other things. That's kind of magical. Okay, got the index of the diner with the first line. Then we grab the variable that will be the diner's location and unify with diner lock. So diner lock is now constrained to be the location of the diner. And now we can call diner dist with more arguments. What's the zero? A variable constrained to the distance score we've accumulated already. It's weird to think of zero as a variable you can constrain to, but that's what unification is, constraining to a known value. So if a chair or a sleeper is two cars from the diner, we add two to that. Yes, or more accurately, we'll make a new variable constrain, constrained to two more than the last variable. Remember, when this code is executing, we don't know the car's positions, so we don't know it's a two, but we can still constrain to be more by this value. Hey, Annie, what about cars like the lounge? Yeah, what do you want to do with them? I think we can ignore them. Sometimes people will go from the lounge to diner, but we can ignore them. Okay, uh, this is a recursive solution, so when we run out of cars, we have to have a base case. Uh, we'll constrain disk to so far, and now if it's a chair or a sleeper, we can make a new variable constrained to so far, plus the distance for this car, and then recursively call to keep adding cars. What about the other cars, like lunch? Uh, we just pass our so far variable through. Hey, that's it. Only a little bit of diner dist felt like normal prolog code. Most of this is just setting up constraints. Will it work? Sure, all my programs worked the first time. <laughs> Are you sure there's not some magic of video editing going on here? Honestly, this program almost did run the first time. I made a mistake in diner dist, but uh, I noticed that 
CLPFD programs, though they're kind of hard to write, uh, often have really few uh, bugs. So let's try it. Let's add some random cars, the obser an observation, stick the diner in there, and a couple of sleepers, and then find out what contests there are. And here's a bunch of consists. That was great. What happens if a consist is impossible, though? Like, if there's two observation cars, they can't both be on the back. Oops. Make that a list. Oh, of course, no solution is possible, so it fails. Thanks, Annie. Well, Prologue and CLPFD helped. I can arrange my trains now. Choo -choo!